I'm Alec, and I'm about to go uh, interview the mayor of Athens, Kelly Gertz. Shout outs. Mayor Gertz hanging out with me today. It's a beautiful Wednesday. The Welcome 20 to City Hall. Yeah, it's the first time the the first time I'd ever been was the, the last time I was up here to see you. And yeah, it's beautiful inside. Yeah. I love the architecture. In it is a nice building. I think this building's 120 years old this year. Yeah. How old is uh Athens altogether? So as a place that people called Athens. Yeah. Uh 1806 is really when we had our birth as a community. Uh, of course, the university had been sort of scoped out for some years prior to that. Sure. You know, the state assembly decided they wanted a university in 1785. Uh, it took some time for it to actually land here. Uh, university buildings began coming out of the ground in about 1802. Athens becomes a city, 1806. Interestingly, Athens didn't have a mayor for about... 70 years though. So oh, the wow. first many decades of Athens existence, there was a three member commission that governed Athens. And then in the 1870s, they decided, well, we may want to modernize a little bit, <laughs> elect a mayor. Uh, and so then uh, Athens moved along with a mayor, of course, as a standalone city. And then in 1990, uh, residents decided it would be really a good idea to merge the city and the county, sure. given that geographically this is the smallest county in the state, and a big portion of the population of the county was already living in the city. So that's when the city and county got married, cool. and we became athens Clark County. And so I am now the fifth mayor of the unified government of athens Clark County. Congratulations. That was one hell of a history lesson, because I wouldn't have learned that about anywhere else. I'm here for you. A better person to learn it from than anybody. Yeah. You try. Uh, with that being said, since you know a lot about Athens, are you from here? Did you grow up here? I, I am not from here. Okay. Um, now, I now have a child who was born here, so um, I, I call Noah, my son, um, sort of my anchor in Athens. So, sure. so, so he has solidified my presence here, born at St. Mary's on Baxter Street. Um, but I came here for graduate school in the mid-1990s. My parents are from Minneapolis, and my dad was uh, in the Navy for his career. And so in the very early 1970s, when I was a young child, we ended up in Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. So I spent 20 years in Norfolk, uh, went all through school, um, worked all kinds of jobs, um, ended up going to undergraduate school there mm -hmm. and getting a degree in sociology and criminal justice from Old Dominion University and had decided I really wanted to move into education. And so yeah. I came here, got a graduate degree in education, and then began teaching first seventh graders, then eighth graders, then high school students. Uh, later was principal at Classic City High School, which is kind of the small, non-traditional public school wow. here. Um, and then worked for uh, what's now Foothills Regional High School, which is the regional evening public school uh, that kind of supports kids from you know, roughly Commerce down to Milledgeville. Um, and then I have just begun my sixth year as mayor of athens Clark County. I can't believe it. Yeah, dude. It's a long time coming. That's it's crazy. Good. How many children, like, how many kids' lives do you think you interacted with, like, throughout your time working with the... It's, it's probably in the thousands. Yeah. I, 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 certainly it's in the thousands. Um, the coolest thing about having all those relationships with young people is that, you know, they grow into adulthood. Sure. And many of them stick around town. And, you know, you've developed these multi-decade contacts. And so it's unusual for me if I go out for a walk. I, I like to walk. That's kind of my probably biggest source of exercise these days. Yeah. It is, you know, I'll be on East Broad Street or Prince Avenue. Um, and there's a car stoplight, window rolls down and somebody <laughs> yeah. hollers my name Gertz, Gertz and, 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 and it's somebody who I taught 20 years ago oh my god and so it's sweet I mean yeah, just no, heartwarming that's... do you uh do you think that that helped drive you into becoming the mayor and uh trying to become the mayor so you can you know 
mm-hmm. create more change in the community? Yes, a- absolutely. I, I don't think I would have gotten involved in, in local policy making. And of course, I was on the county commission for 12 years for three terms before I was mayor. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have had that experience or this experience had I not been in the classroom working with young people mm-hmm. and their families here in Athens. Uh, among the things I did at Coyle Middle School, where I taught seventh and then eighth graders, uh, was also working as the homebound instructor. So if kids were on long-term disability, sure. you know, you know, let's say they'd broken a limb or you know had a bacterial infection and just couldn't come in every day, right. I would go visit those young people a couple of times a week, and so that got me into neighborhoods all over town. Yeah. And so I, I, I got accustomed to sort of the geographic lay of Athens. Um, because, you know, the reality is I think a lot of people come here as undergraduates. Sure. And you can easily spend four years of your life on campus and hanging out downtown and not know the rest of the community. Right. But because I was in Nellie B or the Spring Valley Trailer Park or, you know, Lexington Gardens or, um, you know, any neighborhood – it gave me a sense of the community, and among other things, it gave me a sense of the needs in the community. Right. And I realized, listen, I can I could be a rock star in the classroom. I don't want to pretend I was, but I could be like the coup de gras of all teachers. Sure. But there's still some needs that aren't going to be cared for for those young people and their families, and, and so that really drove me into wanting to run for office. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine the first person perspective of seeing mm-hmm. you know, different families, situations, all demographics. Um, quick question for you. I know you said you like walking. What's one of your favorite things about Athens? Would you say it's a running store? Uh, five points? There are a host of great things about Athens. Sure. And it, it's hard to narrow down. Um, definitely the local economy, any number of people who are running fantastic small businesses from the running store, independent bakery, Rashi's Cuisine, you name it. Yeah. Um, so many cool places, lots of great music venues. I'm a big music guy, so uh, I, I like going out to listen to bands. And you know, and I'll say I've lived in a handful of communities. You know, between living in Norfolk and, and the time I came here, I can't think of a place in America where you can walk to more live music venues, kind of in one urban core. Oh, no I mean, no, no, no place that I've been, not Minneapolis, not Austin, Texas, live music capital of the country. Right. There's no place where there are that many live music stages, you know, within close proximity. So that's super cool. Um, and, and I do like to walk. And so, I mean, I can't pretend that this is always easy work. <laughs> and so sometimes I need to decompress a little bit. Oh, sure. You know, I want to be among nature. And so for me, uh, an ideal afternoon, if I've had a you know, challenging or heavy duty week, is to just walk up the Greenway um, to Sandy Creek Nature Center and um, and hike the trails there. Like that time underneath the trees yeah. in nature, you know, is refreshing, and, uh, and and that's accessible from downtown. And so I like that too. You know, you can move quickly from kind of this dense urban grid, you know, into the natural sphere. Yeah, it's a great way to get to the east side. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, with you talking about decompressing and things like that, another question would be, uh, what would you say a common misconception about your role in the city mm. is? Now, that's, uh, that's, that's a great question. Um, what I have learned sure. is that when you have a title like mayor, that comes with lots of expectations. And among the expectations is that you can handle all things or manage all things. Yeah. Um, you, you can make all things happen. Um, it's not unusual for me to get calls or emails or visits from people who want the governor to do something, to people who want the school district to do something, um, to people who want the rain that falls from the sky to do a different thing. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so people ascribe all this power to you that you don't really have. Yeah. But because you got the title... <laughs> it's assumed that, hey, if you can't do it, you can find somebody for me who can do it. So that's that's an interesting phenomenon in mayoring. It's, a, it's kind of like networking. I'm sure everybody knows. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, a quick question. Uh, for folks that are thinking about coming to Athens, Clark, what would you want them to know about our city? This is a city 
that, that has such vitality. The people here are lovely. Um, it's easy to make friends here. You know, no matter what you like to do, uh, whether you like good food, um, whether you like live music, uh, whether you like outdoor life, whether you're into recreation or sports, all of that is here for you in Athens. Um, I, I often describe Athens as a city that really sort of punches above its weight. You know, we sort of carry the, the, the cultural heft of a city much, much larger than Athens right here. Uh, quality of life is great. And, and I can say as, as parent of a fifth grader, it's a great place to raise a kid. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you think also of communities that have amenities of our quality, often being much larger places, obviously places where you might have to spend more time in traffic than in Athens. And so that's a lovely piece of Athens too, that you can get around pretty easily. There are relatively few pinch points here at this town. Oh yeah, I get to work in six minutes. Mm -hmm. It's just right right down the street from me. Um, what sort of principles are you thinking about when making choices for the city and citizens and how to best serve them? I often compare um, civic life and civic health to, 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 to the health of your own body, okay. your own self. And so, you know, you think about if you go to your general practitioner, they, they don't just ask, are you getting enough exercise? They don't just ask, you know, how's your diet? They don't just ask, is your mental health good? You know, all those things and so many more play into what it means to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to civic life, you know, I'm always asking myself, what are the cornerstones of a healthy community? And how do we put those cornerstones in place in a way that's going to be lasting? Yeah. In a way not that just is going to be impactful for this moment and this year, but long term. So I'll give you one example, right? Okay. You talk to mayor of any community, the question of public safety comes up. And part of public safety is, hey, do you have a good police force? Sure. Do they have the technology they need? Are you able to hire people at the right rate? And those are all very, very important questions. But you also have to ask, what are you doing today to make sure that in 10 years and 20 years, you're setting successors up for a place that's safe to live. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking ourselves, how do we make neighborhoods that are safer by design, that are set up to be safe? What are we doing with our young people that makes them more likely to go into very positive adult experiences yeah. and less likely to go into circumstances that are gonna be dangerous or damaging to their health or the health of those around them? So. When I'm thinking about the decisions we make now, it's both how are we setting up solid cornerstones and cornerstones that are gonna be lasting. If, uh, if you uh, had a crystal ball in front of you then with some of the decisions you've helped make, what would you say the future looks like for Athens then? Well, the, the, the future is one, I think, of, of greater economic vitality, and greater civic health, um, and, and greater safety and also more fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I think about the number of amenities that have been put in place in just the last few years, uh, whether it's the Firefly Trail uh, or the Classic Center Arena that's under construction now or the complete reimagining of the former Georgia Square Mall property. And those are all going to be just fun places to be. Yeah. Uh, in addition to being things that contribute to uh, the cultural life and, and to the economic health of the community. I know you have three years left as mayor, and I'm sure you enjoy it very much, but uh, what are you looking forward to doing when you're not mayor? You got any big plans? Have you thought about this at all? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I have a few working years left after uh, being mayor, so I'll, I'll be 55 oh, okay. when I'm gonna be mayor. And, uh, and I like to work, I really enjoy working. In, in part because work is a place where you have great relationships and you continue to learn and that's a wonderful thing about this job. So I know I'll want to be in a position where I both use some of the skills I've developed here and in my time in public ed and can contribute to the community. So I, I imagine I will be doing something uh, in, in civic service, whether that's in education or housing or something maybe adjacent to there. Uh, I can tell you what I'm also looking forward to is uh, slightly less 
email traffic at midnight <laughs> and uh, slightly fewer meetings in this room uh, where, you know, some days I'm here from 5 p.m. until midnight uh, in, in front of a room full of people in the cameras. And, uh, and while I've enjoyed that experience, I also will enjoy not having that experience on a weekly basis. Oh, I'm sure. As a realtor, you know, I've had some folks call me at funky times, send me some crazy emails at crazy hours. Yes. What sort of uh, activities do you enjoy doing with your family? you got a fifth grader now. I, I do. Um, our, our son is a huge sports nut, both as a, a spectator and a player. Dogs fan? Big dogs fan. Okay. Um, big Braves fan, and so um, we, you know, often we go to baseball games at Foley Field. Um, I enjoy going to my son's basketball games, uh, and then he also likes to fish a lot. And so, you know, you can often find us uh, up at Lake Chapman at Sandy Creek Park, uh, which, which is a great public space too. Uh, you know, in the warmth of the summer, you'll find us swimming at the beach there. Um, there's just so much to enjoy here in Athens. Yeah, it's got it all, man. All right, I got one last question for you. I told you that I wasn't gonna ask you anything political, but you owe me one. I didn't get to see you the first time, but I was gonna show you this and ask for your opinion on it, okay? Because I think a lot of people would like to know what you think about. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I, I, I have seen this. Yes. No, I, uh, I, 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 I've encountered all kinds of crazy things on the <laughs> Internet. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, uh, the, the feet that continue to support me have inspired so many. <laughs> no, that's awesome, dude. I appreciate yes. it. Yes. Th th this this will be the peak of my fame, really. Uh, there you go. No doubt. But, uh well, again, man, we really do thank you for your time. It's super cool that you take a couple or took a couple of minutes to hang out with us. We we greatly appreciate it. This is fantastic. I uh, can't say it enough. Um, Hope everybody has a fabulous 2024. This is going to be a great year.